Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Stock. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Today I would like to talk to you about some of the performance that we've had with GNOG. Uh, it's been uh, pretty nice the past couple of days. I think that we're going to continue seeing strength from that over the next 12 month period and especially as news comes out about legalization and all those other catalysts. Uh, we'll talk about that soon. Uh, also, uh, some of the EV charging and then I also have um, Another stock that I was taking a look at the chart and I was like, hey, you know what? I think this deserves a little bit more uh, closer inspection. So uh, I have those stocks for you and, uh, and I hope that you enjoy the things that I have to talk about. And uh, well, let's just get right onto it. Let's get ready to rock. All right, I decided to do something just a little bit different today. Rather than uh, do the the, uh, the plugs that I have for support for the channel, I decided to go right to the stocks. So this first stock that we're looking at here is Golden Nugget Online Gaming, and this is one that I've featured before on this channel. And uh, if I zoom out a little bit on the daily chart that you're looking at here, you can see that uh, all the way back in December, we were up at $27.18, and we just had a huge sell-off. And then uh, early March, we had a bit of a recovery into about the middle, another sell-off again, down to about $12.22. And I, I was surprised to see that big of a sell-off. I didn't think that we would come back down for that, but we did, and uh, we bounced off of that again. And now we're having uh, this, probably the biggest green candle that we've seen in a while, probably all the way back since it looks back, like back here in uh, the middle of January or so. Uh, or if we're looking at uh, this wide body candle that we have like this, um, you know, either the 12th or the 13th, whatever you want to say for that. Uh, really strong day today, bringing us up over that $17 mark. And that's an excellent thing to see. Uh, we most recently got an upgrade on the price target for this of uh, up to $28 per share. And that was achieved using two different methods. Uh, one brought us down to about $26. And then another one uh, by the same analyst, just another method. Uh, I believe it was the WACC method that they came out to about $30. Uh, I might have those switched though. Um, so the other one is the DCF, by the way, the discounted cash flow. So whichever way that it went, I believe that it was, one was 26, the other was 30. They took the average right in the middle, came out to $28 per share. So still either way, uh, that's a, a rather generous upside from where we're at right now. So if you can take a look up where my cursor is, right there is $26 per share. Even if we don't make that 28, that's still a significant jump, almost back up to that top of where we're at. If we do make it up to 28, then that's that's all the way up here, which of course breaks, breaks that previous high that they had. So uh, this assumes that we get uh, more state legalization and that we get strong numbers coming out of uh, Michigan as time goes on. Uh, Pennsylvania, uh, we're looking for some updates there. I think Virginia's been mentioned, Illinois, uh, New York, there's been a, a deal mentioned there, I believe. Uh, I think it was with one of the tribal casinos that are out of New York. So we've had a lot of really positive news. And I think some of the pain that we saw with the sell-offs uh, was from growth stocks in general selling off. But I think this one kind of got the double whammy because I think being a SPAC, uh, stock that it also uh, people are feeling the pain from SPACs all across the board. So this is one that we want to keep in mind uh, going forward. If you don't already have a position uh, with the 12-month price target that's out there, this would say that it's certainly not too late to take a position. And after a big update today, it looks like we're up nearly 10%. Even if you bought in now, you would still have a fair amount of upside potential. You see it hasn't really done much since the since the market closed, we're still uh, around where we were at before, and it would just it was a, a great day of trading for uh, Golden Nugget. All right, and the next one that I have for you is ChargePoint. Again, another one that I talked about, uh, talking about this one as one of the leaders in the uh, EV charging space that we have, and it just had such a, a rough time of it uh, throughout the sell-off, and people were wondering, hey, what's going on with this? There was so much pain uh, over the SPACs, and there was so much uh, sell-off uh, throughout EV, the EV industry and growth stocks in the first place. This one just felt all of that pain. Uh, coming down and I thought you know here would be about the bottom and then it looked like we retested that low again coming in over here and uh, Hopefully you were able to reduce your dollar cost average coming into that that you're able your cost basis If you're already invested in this stock and invested right along down with it taking advantage of some of these uh, green days that we've had some of this activity You know could be really good news for you now about uh, the infrastructure plan 
Biden's looking to add uh, 500,000 new EV chargers, and ChargePoint, I think, already has like 69,000 or 68,000. Uh, it's it's in the high 60s, thousands of, uh, of chargers, and I took a look at it, and uh, 1,500 of them are the, uh, the level 3 chargers, the super fast charging. So uh, they are the leaders in the United States, and then they're also trying to get into Europe, and they really stand to be benefit from the infrastructure deal, and we could see uh, the, the way the volume changed going back to March the 31st. So also something I want to talk about, something that piqued my interest when we were looking at this today, and I don't remember exactly when I noticed this one, but we have uh, just a little bit, and I would say because of the volume spike, I would say from this candle right here, uh, we have a little bit of a, a pennant formation, so you might even say from, from the previous one, so that uh, strong upward movement, and then you can see we kind of tapered off across the top, so we're also slightly moving up along the bottom. It'd be nice to see more uh, bullish support coming in along the bottom to have a little bit more symmetry across the top and the bottom of this. It's just slanted a little bit too far down. Also, something else about this little pennant formation that we have going, it would be nice to see uh, more of an uptrend leading up to it that would give me more confidence that this thing was headed towards a breakout. I think it still has potential, it still has possibility, and let me let me zoom out again just a little bit to when it actually had some stronger upward movement. So here, uh, when we have that stronger upward movement here, it's a little bit more sustained, and we have that long upward, and then this one didn't quite, this is more of a flag formation that it slanted quickly down on us. As a matter of fact, let me get my drawing tools, and I'll show you that. So what we have here is that flag formation, and right here is the flagpole leading up to that flag formation, and then following that, we have this uh, this breakout moment right here. And so it's not perfect, but these drawings sell tomorrow. I probably should have drew uh, drawn this top part of the flag just a little bit differently, uh, but you can also see the way that the volume spiked leading up to the flagpole, and then it tapered off, and then when it broke out again, we have a little bit more of a volume spike as it drove back up and then it flags a little bit again, doesn't come back down as low. So if we draw in another flag, so this is what we would be looking for, uh, and what I mean by an uptrend leading up to it. So we, we had a longer period uptrend leading up to this, and you can see the way that it took off. Uh, however, over here, I mean, we have nothing but a, a downtrend coming over over this part of the uh, the graph, and we only have this much upward movement uh, for the chart. Let me turn off the uh, the drawing tool here. There we go. So that's all we have is just that little bit of an uptrend before we turn things around. So the EV market in general gaining strength from the infrastructure plays. You know, this could still uh, possibly possibly break out on us in it. I am a bit skeptical because I would like to see a little bit more confirmation that we have going and we just we don't we don't quite have a lot of it going here but I do want to show you something let's take a look at blink now when we look at blink if I zoom in you can see we have similarities so let me put the uh, drawing tool back on here to show you what I'm talking about so we have just maybe a little bit longer of an upward movement but really I guess off the lows so with Blink, it's not quite the same thing, but they do uh, sort of move uh, right along with each other. And I am struggling today to, to use these drawing tools. If I had a mouse instead of using my touchpad, I'd have a better time. Give me one second here. Yeah, there we go. So uh, we have just that little bit of upward movement. And you could argue that it started back here at this low, uh, all the way back at 25, even though it wasn't uh, a straight upward climb, but it's still a part of the trend. So, I mean, even if you wanted to make the case here that we are uh, we start moving up from this bottom, then we have a, a few more days going on. And really, when we talk about a, uh, a bullish flag or a bullish pennant, really that time frame is about 1 to 12 weeks that we're talking about in order for that to take place. And this takes us all the way back to um, second week of March, it looks like, in the second trading week that we had going on. And then we have this little tiny flagpole. from here up to here, and then, let me go see if I can draw this on, I'm not the best at 
clicking the right buttons, but you can see a little bit of that pennant formation going on, and then uh, the pull that we'd have after that would be another breakout this way, and you can see this broke up above that line, and we had a nice uh, uh, movement on that, and something that helped, uh, well, before I get onto that, if you look at the volume, the volume was relatively low uh, for Blink as we go along, and then this would be significantly higher than the past few days that it's had anyway. Uh, and we'll we'll look and see what the market brings to us tomorrow. And with a strong market bias, we could possibly see Blink pulling out a little bit more energy from this. Now, there was also some news that went along with uh, Blink. They uh, made, got a contract for 42 chargers across, I think, pizza places in uh, New York City. So uh, they are much, much smaller than what ChargePoint is. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that the hype's not there. So Blink being a smaller company, getting a contract for 42 more chargers, it was a, brought a lot of excitement to the, the stock today. Uh, my point of bringing this one up is that uh, it seems to be just a little bit ahead of what we could see if we get some good news coming out of charge point tomorrow and we have a strong market bias uh, going along with it that the, gr the market's green tomorrow, especially where EVs are concerned. I think that charge point could be on, the, on its way to doing the, the same thing that we see here. Um, it's not the most convincing chart that I've ever seen. I do like the volume spikes that came along with it and the fact that the volume's tapering off as the pennant uh, formation comes out. Um, but there are, there are a couple small issues that we have, uh, but I still like the way that this is shaping up. All right, the last stock that I have for you, and I can't take credit for discovering this one. This one, uh, I'm going to toss all of, all of it to, uh, to meet Kevin because I was watching him with his market open. I like watching his show. I think he's very entertaining, and he has a lot of really good information. If you haven't stopped over and checked him out, and I'm sure I mean, he's uh, pretty big in the YouTube world for stocks, so most likely you've seen him or most likely you watch him. Uh, I highly recommend going over and listening to the things that he has to say. He does a lot of coverage from just, a, you know, broadly across the market. And, uh, you know, I think he does a great job. And this is uh, one of the companies, GHVI, this, uh, the merging with uh, Matterport. And what Matterport does is they make 3D models of uh, homes and buildings. And more recently, they've had a, a report that, uh, you know, let me just bring up the news. It'll be so much better than me trying to remember exactly what they say. So the article is titled, An Industry First Matterport True Plan for Exactimate uh, Accelerates Property Loss Estimation by Four Times to Help Shorten Insurance Claims Cycle. So the benefit that we have with the proprietary software that they have, and I believe that they have an app, it's on the App Store, it's definitely on iOS, I think it might be on Google Play, um, but that's something they would want to look into. Uh, they basically make 3D models of, of the structures, and really they, they are innovating, and they're changing the way that... Uh, these claims can be made and it really is uh, cutting down on the amount of time which means uh, fewer man hours on the job which means that the insurance companies can be more efficient with what they do and uh, so the software itself is great so one of the risks that you would have with software as a service like GHVI with Matterport um, is that if other people come into that space and are also able to uh, innovate and either take some of that market share or if they're able to come up with something better than what Matterport would offer, then those would be things that would be risks to the company. And I'm sure if you go to their SEC filings and look at the risks for the company, that innovation side, uh, if they're not the ones innovating, if other people come into the space and innovate, then that can really affect their total addressable market or the market share that they would have. So they claim market share to be absolutely, uh, the market space for this, uh, for their software to be absolutely huge and that they stand uh, in, in a prime location to, uh, to dominate in that space. And I think right now they only have something like 1% exposure to the space and maybe less than $200 million worth of revenue. So I'm not too well read up on this company, but looking at this chart, we can see the way that it just took off up to $28 a share uh, when people were in, uh, incredibly excited about this. And that takes us uh, middle of February when everything else was selling off. So this sold off with it. And then it came back a little, not not quite as much. This is also a SPAC company. So being a SPAC, it has the same pain as uh, other growth companies do. And then on top of that, it also being a SPAC, I think there's still some hurt going on there that it brought us right back down. The one thing I like is that since March 24th or so, we haven't really seen too much from this. It looks like it's going up to about $14.50 a share and that we have a relatively decent bottom here at about $13 a share. And so right now it's at $13.82 as of the market close. 
but I like watching this trade sideways. I like watching this consolidate. I especially like it uh, establishing this line of support that we have. So this is a company that I'm thinking about, well, that I'm going to read more about and I might possibly take a position on and I wanted to bring it to your attention just in case you haven't already been thinking about it. Um, it's a, a potentially high margin company. I think right now uh, they're at something like 55% margin and by 2025 or 2026, they plan on being up at like 73% margin and those are just huge profit margins for a company. And I really think that Matterport revolutionizes the space that they're in. So let me summarize. Golden Nugget, uh, ticker symbol GNOG, I think that they will be able to meet that price target, at least very much approach that price target that we have of anywhere from 24 as the low price target to the $28 per share price target uh, that's most recently been put out. And that would be just an incredible upside from where they're at right now. So even going up just 50% from where they're at now at about $17 per share would be $25.50 per share. And it puts us pretty much right in between the $24 and the $28. And so I think that that, uh, I think both of those 12 month price targets are reasonable, especially as we have more uh, legalization across the states for online uh, gaming and for online gambling. So I like the position that I have with them. I'm going to continue to hold it over the next 12 months and I'm going to watch it as the quarters go by, as the news comes out, as we see more PR for the company. I think there's a lot of positives going for, for Golden Nugget from here forward. Also, Also, ChargePoint, I think that ChargePoint is setting itself up that it, with strong market bias and, and good news tomorrow. If anything like that comes out, I think we could see a nice pop coming out of their stock price as the bulls continue to put upward pressure on the stock price and the bears put that downward pressure. Now it's just a matter of who wins going forward. Farther, farther, farther. There she is. I'm keeping it in there. How many fiance points do I have to exchange to keep that in? A thousand. A thousand. Alright, I better wrap this up because my battery's dying on my computer. Uh -oh. Alright, so if that stays in the video, that was my fiance with uh, the cat Diego. And, uh, well, it makes me smile, so I might just leave it in there. So charge point, I think with uh, positive news and a good market bias, I think that we're going to see uh, some good movement. I think the bulls stand a chance to uh, push that pennant formation. Like I said, it's not the most convincing that I've seen, but, you know, I think that there's at least reason to sp suspect that we could either see another day where we sort of trade sideways, maybe, um, get a little bit more pressure, a little bit more squeeze uh, before it breaks out. It really depends on what the market gives to, to us uh, over the next uh, trading day or two. Finally, GHVI, Matterport. I really like Matterport as a company, and I look forward to learning more about them, about their business model that they have, about the outlook that they have, and the market share that they really stand to capture given their current software as a service that they have. I really like that they took a lot of the the tech that would be maybe on their end of maybe HD cameras or something like that, or even the tech for people uh, to have to buy and just to shrunk it down to just working with just their smartphone. So that cost isn't falling on Matterport and that cost also isn't falling on the businesses that use Matterport service. So that, that entry price is almost non-existent because people have their smartphones anyway. As a matter of fact, it would even allow their smartphones to possibly be a business write-off for them. So I like the ideas and the more that I think about Matterport, the more I like Matterport and the more I think that it's worth my investment. I just have to do a little bit more reading, a little bit more research. And I just hope in the meantime that that price doesn't slip by me because I really think that right now with it consolidating, with the trading sideways and establishing a nice bottom like it is, I think that we're getting to be in, in really good shape going forward. So I'd love to see a very green outlook for Matterport going forward. So that's what I have for you today. If you enjoyed my video and you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button, hit the notification bell hit the like button and share it with your friends. I really appreciate any support that you show. If you would like to support me more, down in the description is a link for my Patreon. 
You go down there, you click the link, head on over. Uh, over there, I have my growth portfolio, my dividend portfolio, my weekly watch list, my weekly newsletter that I put out. I also started a line of Patreon exclusive videos and that's been a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy the conversations that I have with my patrons in the, in the private Discord that's also a part of that Patreon. So if you wanna go and check it out, uh, I would love to have you over there and I look forward to learning from you and learning about you uh, and really watching that community grow. Finally, down in the description is a link for Webull. That's the trading platform that I use in my videos. If you want to deposit your $100 or sign up and deposit your $100 and get your two free stocks, it's uh, free money in the bank for you by doing it that way. You have a chance for, I, I think Google's still in there, uh, Apple's in there, and there's some really high priced stocks that are in there, all up to the random number generator uh, that would be within that mix. I get two free shares for the referral. Thank you in advance for any support that you show. Last thing, these videos are for entertainment purposes only. Always do your own research and due diligence. Contact a financial advisor before making any financial decisions. I'm Dr. Stock. Thanks for rocking with me. Now go get that money.